Welcome to the Urban Cowgirl Show. Well, this is part four of our series about training for pairs driving. Um, we're going back to trying to review what cross check reins are all about. And with each session that we have with Sadie and her mom Eve, we're going to desensitize Sadie to training harness pole simulators like that, uh, that drain pipe sitting there on the ground. When we're done uh, reviewing this cross check reins, we're going to take Sadie out to the middle and just keep touching her uh, with the training harness pole. We have treats. We remove the pressure when she gives us the right answer. When she's really good, she gets a little dry treat. And we think that Sadie's um, personality will be such that she, rather than forcing her by putting her into unusual places and, and making her claustrophobic, we think she'll eventually say, okay, I trust you, you trust me, and uh, she'll be okay, uh, relatively safe, um, in case she steps over the training harness pole or in case the tug strap or training harness pole happen to touch her on her lower leg. We're going to try to arrange it so that anything that's built for this pair's driving is going to allow both the tug straps and the harness poles to be above the hock of the back legs. And that includes, we're going to build a, uh, a four cart so that we can have the double trees and the single trees behind the four cart rather than behind the horse. And at the same time, the driver um, will have a two wheeled vehicle to get around. The four cart has thick rubber wheels so it can travel real nicely on pasture like this. Okay, now, while Katie and Angela stand there with Sadie and Eve. We're going to pick up the uh, parts of the cross check reins and start connecting them unless we feel that we're getting any kind of resistance. And while they do that, I'm going to read from my notes of uh, Doc Hamill's Fundamentals DVD number three that talks about hooking team lines. So the cross-check reins, recall, please, from prior shows or find the prior shows online if you haven't watched them, the cross-check reins are a way to control two horses with one pair of reins. So you see behind Sadie and Eve, we have the, the reins, the drive lines laying on the grass. But here in the front, we have four segments. Four because what we're going to do is pick up each segment and connect to the horse in the proper place so that that single pair of drive lines will control both horses going G, ha, back and step up. Uh, now can you guys pick up, let's do the outside rein first. Each of you pick up your outside rein We go through the rings of the saddle. We haven't done this in a while, so we may have to do some review of the Doc Hamill DVD to be sure. Is that, is that your, your recollection? We go through the rings of the saddle? I don't think so. No, not through the rings of the saddle. Through, through the upper ring of the collar. Are you doing that, Angela, over there? Say it louder. Oh, I had to pick up the back. Oh, okay. All right. She's getting it now. Angela's got Eve on a lead line, and Katie's got her daughter Sadie, Eve's daughter Sadie on a lead line. All right. Now we've got uh, buckled on to their bits the outside rein. Now here's the complication, and that's the cross check, the inside reins. See how they cross over each other. And see how we have a ring, we call it the center ring, uh, that both cross check reins go through. Now here is a, a really important aspect of this hookup. 
the, and, and this is reviewed, and I'm going to read it, the, uh, it's reviewed on Doc Hamill DVD number three, that uh, the cross checks go through the top aim ring on the same horse, then through the center ring, then to the bit of the second horse. That took us a while to recall, to figure out, and in the past we have um, simply hooked these up and did a few step ups, uh, but we didn't do a lot of driving because we uh, took some time out to work with a jockey stick to keep their front ends together, to work with a butt rope to keep their back ends together, and then to anticipate problems if the uh, harness pole or the harness pole simulator was going to cause trouble. Doesn't seem to cause any trouble for Eve. You can see by her body language, she's just fine on all of this. Now Sadie is real aware, she's the youngster. Now we're going through her bit. Today is mostly just review for us and for you. We're not going to move. And the reason we're not going to move is we don't have a team of more than three today. And I feel that when you're training for this kind of activity, you need at least four or five in case there's some trouble. You have somebody to help calm down a horse or move the camera or disconnect a, a strap that uh, is not where it should be. Okay, now let me move the camera again one more time here so I can do a close up of this complication here. Yeah, uh, one more thing, one more piece of tack that we have, uh, and I bought them special so that we had this option, is our extenders. Can you uh, point to them, Katie, so I can show what they're doing for us? You see, rather than going through the actual ring of the collar, we put them through some uh, buckled extenders that allows you to uh, uh, let the horse be farther apart without pulling on their collars. So we have an extender on each collar in, this, in between the two horses. And uh, you know what I'm gonna do is, they're okay, so are you guys okay on me leaving the camera here and walking to the back as if we were gonna move, but we really aren't today. So watch, it's all right girls. See how I talk to them, it's all right girls. It's all right. It's all right, girls. It's all right, girls. Very quietly, I'm going to pick up these reins, these drive lines. And if we were going to move out, I'd be in control with these drive lines. Both horses, uh, either on the right or the left, both, or for a back. We're going to, with one set of drive lines and one driver, going to be able to control the pair of horses. Okay, let's uh, disconnect the, uh, the drive lines because I don't want to walk back yet until we have disconnected. Now watch how they disconnect. There's a lot of straps. If they're flapping around, if we get a spook by a horse, it's very dangerous. So I do keep a uh, Swiss Army knife here. In case something gets wrapped around and we can't get it off, we'll cut it off. Oh. See, no. Sadie moves, Eve chooses not to. Yeah. That's typical of their horsonalities. Oh. Okay, we're still removing the cross checks. I'm gonna allow them to be on the ground as long as they're not connected. Here we go. Okay. We've had our fitting, <laughs> our cross check reins fitting. Uh, any comments, girls? Nope. Katie or no? We're we're happy with uh, the result. We we think we've reminded ourselves and reminded or first um, presented to you, the viewer, what a complication, but what. Uh, what, but what simplicity in the future this provides. 
And let me uh, tell you that uh, back in the pioneer days, and still today for show purposes, you can do cross-check reins on more than one pair of horses. Two, three, six pair. But you really got to know where those reins are in your hand, and your horses really have to be trained to accept all the straps, all the excitement of other horses around them. Okay, so let's do this just as a kind of a postscript here. Katie, walk back to that training harness pole. We're going to show you how we do this with Sadie. We've got Eve. She makes a good wall because she doesn't um, mind any of this and she tends to stand still, but Sadie kicks up a little bit. And we're always afraid she's going to hurt Eve in, and not meaning to, because Eve's her mom. She wouldn't on purpose hurt her mom. But uh, yeah, we notice that Sadie gets excited even when she touches these because it makes a noise. So we do a lot of walking over. Ah, did you just touch it? <laughs> yes, and you probably didn't hear this on the camera, but we're hearing nostril noises. That's okay, we'll get it so that eventually She'll say, okay, I am not afraid of that thing. I'm not afraid of seeing it. Now she doesn't even want to step over it. So it's like doing obstacles. And I just finished a whole series of three parts about reviewing obstacles in my trail obstacles course. There, we got her confidence. That's what you need. You need there are certain tricks you can use like approach retreat, uh, proper cues, a, a little seesaw or a tug. Good, good. All right, now, Angela, you staying there because we might eat, need Eve as a wall. I'm gonna uh, leave the camera on here and I'm gonna go up and pick that simulated harness pole up a little bit so that Sadie realizes it's not gonna be on the ground. And you'll be able to observe how she reacts. It's got some hardware on it because eventually we'd like to be able to hook it onto parts of their ta harness tack. So the hardware makes noise. It's okay. It's okay. Now I'm going to walk around her with it, not way up high, but not on the ground either. Kind of at just above the hocks. It's all right. It's all right. Good girl. You see how she's dancing around? That's typical. Angela, if you could move in front of the camera, I just want to show what a horse looks like when they're not dancing around, not scared. Eva's done a lot for us so far in farming. She pulls a stone boat, she pulls a harrow, she pulls a log. Now, is Eve gonna make any problem? I don't think so. It's all right, Evie. It's all right. I'm even going to touch her. It's all right. It's all right. Good, Eve. See, she's confident. She trusts us. Okay, move out. Now, Katie, you come up here. As comparison. It's all right. Now, we've got the Monty Roberts dually halter on, so if Sadie oh. continues to dance around and not be totally respectful to us, we'll put the lead line on the side rings. Back. Back. I'll leave it up to Katie when she thinks that's appropriate. It's all right. Okay, now, Sadie says, I want to check that thing out. See, she doesn't trust it. Eve didn't even care. She didn't want to check it out. It's all right. Ah. You make the wrong answer uncomfortable. It's all right but give them a chance to investigate if they're concerned. Make sure that you're not in flea path because any horse will flee if they feel trapped. It's their way to protect themselves. Woo. How about putting it on the side ring, Katie? I have to take the bridle off. Oh, okay. We can take the bridle off. We don't need it for this. 
let it fall out of their mouth, good. Now we're putting it on the side ring. Let me um, make sure the camera is showing you the side ring. It helps to have a camera operator, but we needed all three of us to work with these horses today. Okay, now put it, it's on the side ring, point to it. You see, and point to the uh, pair of, yeah, a double-stranded nylon that goes over the nose, which makes it like a rope halter, even though it's a web halter. Okay, now I'm going to go and finish this session up. We do very short sessions, especially with Sadie, by walking around again and seeing if she'll let me touch her ribs like Eve did. Notice that Eve is just patiently waiting and snoozing. It's all right, Sadie. It's all right. We're going on the other side this time. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. If you're getting the wrong answer, ask for a back. If you can get a back, you usually get their focus. It's all right. It's all right. Okay. See. See, when I get behind her, she says, wait a minute, I got to see what's happening back there. Why? Because there's no confidence. She doesn't trust us yet. She will. This is called desensitization. Good girl. Coming closer. Good girl. With this money, Robert, you want to, uh, if you've done a lot of jerking, you need to bring it back over the center. There. Okay. Not jerking, but seesaw or whatever, or tugging. There. Oh, I like that. She's really coming forward and she's saying, what is that thing? It's all right. Now, will she let me bring it up to her? No way. <laughs> no way. Not yet. You see the difference? She just, when I started bringing that up to her ribs, she said, no way. I'm moving out. It's all right. Then that's too big of a step to take for Sadie today. I'm glad we got to show you how Eve reacts to that. I'm going to show you that we're going to find a place that we call our note of resolution in today's session, but it's going to be a very tiny baby step. Good. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Easy now. Easy. She's thinking about stepping back, but she didn't. So she's giving me the right answer, so I'm going to step back. I'm going to remove the pressure. When you get the right answer, remove the pressure. That's their best reward. But of course, when we're all done and we start removing the tack, they'll get a little treat too. And they'll know that. They'll look forward to it. And we'll show you our notes of re re resolution at each session until we've accomplished pairs driving with cross-check reins and with our homemade training harness pole, which we keep stored up here out of the way so we can go get it whenever we feel we're ready to connect it to their collars and the tug straps. That's all for today. Sonia Sokolo, the Urban Cowgirl. We have clips hooked up here where they know they're being harnessed and then unharnessed. And the clips are such that if something very spooky comes by on the road and they feel like they have to get away, they'll pull back, but they won't sit back. They won't break their halters or their lead lines. It's a great tool to have in your barn. We have a four-man team today for this session. Uh, we feel after last session that we are ready to try to drive in a straight path 
with this pair of horses, Mother Eve and Daughter Sadie. We even uh, think we're ready to put the jockey stick on to make sure they stay together. We're going to put it on their halters today. But Katie, remember something from Doc Hamill's DVD number three? Can you tell us, Katie? Um, it was if you had an older horse, a well-trained horse with a young horse, and you're trying to have them walk together, the young horse is likely to move its head a lot, around a lot more. Um, so put the jockey stick on the halter of the young horse and put it onto the breast collar of the older horse so that the young horse is not pulling on the old horse's head a lot. Okay, which may be called for in this case because Sadie's the young horse. She's been known to throw her head quite a bit when we try to do harness work. So, uh, Katie, I'm, you know, it's a judgment call. Uh, being that Evie is usually our steadfast horse and, Katie, and Sadie is our uh, young uh, horse that needs uh, more work, where do you think we should put the I would jockey say, stick today? Since they're still both being trained. Yes. To walk together, I would say leave it on the head. On the head. Okay. Our objective today is a straight path, three to five steps forward. Boy, will we be happy if we feel that uh, we're comfortable doing that, and we won't do it unless we're comfortable. And uh, I've got Eve, Eve's lead line, and uh, Angela has Sadie's oh, lead line. We are hooked up with the cross-check reins, as we showed you in our last session. So far, both horses are just standing. Oh, ah, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't want them going without each other. Do you I want need to for do, Evie to back up a little bit. Do you want to do reins or be at the head? Ask the question do again, Do you want please? to do reins or be at the head? Uh, I think I want to be at Eve's head. Okay. Okay, so, uh, but I'm going to ask Eve to back up and you support with your drive, rein, drive lines. Back, back. Good. Woo. You're hooked up over there, Angela? Okay. Yep. Okay, how about connecting these? This uh, jockey stick has a quick release. And we have a camera operator who can come and help us if we get into trouble. Katie is going to do the directing with her voice and her drive lines. Uh, we've been uh, working with uh, Sadie before we turn the camera on, touching her all over with this jockey stick. And she didn't seem to mind at all. Not as much as she minds with our harness pole and our harness pole simulators. Maybe because it's short, maybe because she's getting better trained, we don't know. But each day is a challenge, each day is a tiny baby step, each day we hope to do it as safely as is humanly and equinely possible. Okay, let's do a, a quick check here. We've got the, draw, the check reins on. Katie's ready to go. Katie has a mic on. I have a mic on. Katie's going to ask for forward motion. And Angela, are you comfortable with what your role is? And remember, if we need to take this jockey stick off, notice where it is and that we're going to have to. Sometimes these quick releases work only if you have two hands, one holding the quick release, one pulling the sleeve down. Sometimes that's hard if you've got a spooky horse. Let's go for... Let's be real conservative today. Let's go for three steps forward. And Katie? Stop. Stop. Oh, whoa. Okay, the uh, speed control was already a problem. Okay, let's release the jockey stick. Just that short. Erin, or Angela, can you get her to hoe? Okay, let go. I've got it. Okay, we're taking the cross check reins off. That short path made me realize that we still have speed control, and how are we going to deal with that? And Sadie moved her butt away at the end. Oh, did she? See how far out she is? Yes, and Sela did see. the push my butt out syndrome, and that's why I brought my butt rope with me in case we wanted to show you what that's all about. It's a, a uh, technique that Doc Hamill says to use when you've got a pair yeah, that don't it. stay parallel in the cross-check reins. You put a butt rope from their collars around uh, on top of their tails uh, to back to the collars. 
so that when they try to separate, they feel the pressure of the butt rope on their hips. But you know, that's yet another desensitization problem and potentially dangerous because if a butt rope happens to go under the tail and a horse has a very strong muscle at the top of their tail and they clamp down on it, you could be in a very uh, unsafe situation. Are they off now? Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you could, uh, as soon as you're ready, you can just drop the lines and hold on to Eve. I'm going to try to show on the end of this session's video what we're going to be working on off camera and then hopefully show you on camera how, how it works safely. And that is, this is kind of a Mickey Mouse butt rope. I'm going to dedicate a rope that has uh, more substance to it than, uh, than these dog leashes hooked together. Uh, dog leashes and dog collars and so forth are very useful when you're working with horses, but when it comes to keeping two hips together, oh wow, I think a more substantial rope is in order, cut to size, and I believe the size, we're going to double check, it should be anywhere from 16 foot to 22 foot. But here's the idea, yeah, you don't even have to push her to the, we're going to connect to the halter actually connect to the halter. We're going to connect to something like a key ring to the halter. Can you hold this? And then I'm going to come around. We're going to do all this in a standstill. Whoa. See, she's already wondering what all this rope stuff is all about. She's concerned about it. It's been a while since we've even tried it on. Then you go around the butt, feeding it through the uh, you know, let's say I have a dog collar here hanging under her tail. I'd feed it through the dog collar so it won't fall on the ground. Come around. And let's say Eve is right here. Go around through Eve's dog collar and to her key ring on her halter. And what that does then is if they try to separate their hips, uh, the britchen, the dog collar on the britchen, the rope, the people at the head uh, help them to understand that they're to be going in parallel as a pair and not as individuals. So we have a lot to do. We're doing it as safe as we possibly can. We're showing you every step of the way with these two individuals who form a pair, a Morgan Mare pair, Eve and Sadie. And that's all for today. Sonia Sokolo, the Urban Cowgirl. Next, we will be working on desensitizing Sadie to the butt rope, as well as sensitizing Eve to the stop command and speed control. See more at www.urbancowgirlchannel.com.